Hey guys, Jackdaw here. Today I am delving into the eighth entry in my new law series. Last episode, I discussed the secret society known as the Executors, who speak on behalf of powers across the sea. Continuing from that, in this episode, I'm exploring Navarra, Fadis' central nation that is best known for its unique treatment of deaf, strong royal dynasties and all things to do with the arts and trade. Throughout the ages, Navarra has built a powerful empire that many claim rivals that of Orle. However, the creation of that mighty nation was truly a turn of events. Still to this day, an ancient rivalry of two royal families brews. Before we uncover Navarra's hot-headed monarchy, let's uncover the history of this most unique nation. Once the land was the largest marcher city-state, settled by an early human tribe known as the Planocene, who were a farming people with a surprisingly long written history and a strong culture of animist worship. Many Navarans today trace their roots back to this tribe. The Planocene and their lands were conquered by the Tevinta Imperium in the following ages, declaring their tribal lands for Tevinta. For a while, Navarra's city-state became a part of the Imperium. By the time of the Glory Age, the ruling of of the Navarran city-state had changed hands several times. Ineffective leadership and infighting resulted in a poor populace lagging far behind other free marcher city-states. Many Navarran leaders at the time thought it would be best to cede Navarra's land to Orle or Starkhaven. Fortunately, this never came to pass as Caspar Pentagast seized the Navarran throne. With his reign, Navarra's fortune turned around, finally becoming a prosperous land. King Caspar's bloodline, the Pentagasts, held the Navarran throne from the Glory Age well into the Exalted Age. For about 300 years up until Navarran general Tylus Van Markham took the opportunity to stir the populace against the Pentagasts. Van Markham claimed to the people of Navarra that the Pentagasts had abandoned their values that once made them great, levelling accusations of decadency and corruption. The people outraged. Van Markham rallied the populace to overthrow the Pentagasts so he could take the throne for himself. King Nestor Pentagast was killed, stabbed 16 times while seated on his throne, while the surviving Pentagasts fled to their hometown Hunterfell. Under the Van Markham King's reign, Navarra aggressively expanded from a city-state to a full-fledged nation, taking many of Orle's northeastern lands for themselves. However, the last Van Markham King died died in the Steel Age, leaving no sons. In a first for power, his daughter married a Pentagast, merging the two rivaling families. United, the Van Markhams and the Pentagasts solidified Navarra's status as an increasingly powerful nation. Both families have ruled Navarra under the Pentagast name for generations, each enjoying equal amounts of nobility and fame. Currently, the King of Navarra is Marcus Pentagast, an old man whose health is as good as his sanity. Many of Navarra's elite believe Marcus's mortalitasi advisors rule the country through him, using him like a puppet to the court. In any regard, Marcus is an old man and many members of the Pentagasts and Van Markhams are lining up to replace his inevitable death. Nonetheless, there are other noble families that believe both the Pentagasts and the Van Markhams have held power for way too long and that it is time for them to step aside. The fight for the throne of Navarra is almost here as Marcus's death is looming. The question is, who will rule this politically charged nation in the Dragon Age going forward? While politics and nobility are Navarra's pastime, on the contrary, Navarans love their arts and entertainment, which makes up the majority of their culture. Each season brings its own particular flavour across the nation. In the summer, markets are filled with fresh fruits, fine wines and all manners of leather. The Minanta River lit with coloured flags as trade boats flock to the scene. And then in the winter, the city is swept with frost. Daring skaters enjoy the iced rivers, while vendors on the banks sell roasted or hot spiced tea. Whether it's the heroic tales regaled of dragon hunting or the intriguing gossip of the courts, truly one can expect a splendid time in Novara, no matter the 
the season. Cumberland is a thriving Navarin city that sits on the Waking Sea. Because of its unique placement, it has become a booming hub in Fadis for trade, therefore making it one of the largest cities in the realm. Whereas Navarra City, the capital of the nation, stands on the Minanta River as a hub for political turmoil, petulant nobles, not good for anything, and too many rich people revering over the dead. One of the most unique aspects of Navarran culture is their perspective on death. While most Chantry nations burn their dead in tribute to Andraste's death on the stake, Navarran mages, known as the Mortalitasi, mummify and house their corpses. They do so because they believe that when a person dies, their soul enters the Fade to be with the Maker. However, when crossing the Fade, their soul displaces a Fade spirit, pushing it out into the waking world. The Mortalitasi offer that displaced spirit a mummified host to keep the spirit intact. The mummified bodies of Navarra's elite are kept in a large mausoleum known as the Grand Necropolis, which is just outside of Navarra City. The majority of the nation do follow the Andrastrian chant of light. However, in Navarra, mages have more power than those in most chantry controlled nations. They are well organized, wealthy, and hold political sway. Navarran mages push the boundaries of what magic can do and are arguably the most well schooled mages outside of Tevinter. However, quite unlike Tevinter, which is governed by a legislative body known as the Magisterium, Navarra is ruled by a monarchy, a royal family. Even so, the conjecture of many Navarran nobles would have you believe that the Mortalitasi truly rule the nation through the sway of the crown. Tevinter Knights described that every mage in the Kingdom of Navarra was a part of the Mortalitasi, a group of influential and highly respected deaf mages trained in the mysteries of magic. They serve as Navarra's arcane protectors and priests. The Mortalitasi have many sections within it, fulfilling individual roles around the sanctum. One of them is a group of select mages invited into an old fraternity called the Morn Watch. The Watchers serve as elite guardians, keepers of the Grand Necropolis and its sacred repository of the dead. Another group within the Mortalitasi are called the Guides of the Path. They're responsible for shepherding corpses. Undead skeletons bound by a spirit also help the Mortalitasi, the weakest of the undead, act as servants. While many other Mortalitasi mages practice rituals and bind both the Fade and the Waking World to their will. The majority of nobles in Navarra respect the Mortalitasi and their business of preserving the dead. Some even say the mages were sent by the Maker. However, others will spew about conspiracies regarding the Mortalitasi's secret rituals and mind-controlling experiments. While that may sound like idle gossip, Rumours persist of noble involvement in secret necromantic cults. Whether that's related to the Mortalitasi or not, one cannot be too sure. While not as grandstanding, the political scene on the streets of Navarra City prepare for King Marcus's replacement, as Pentagast, Van Markham, and many other Navarran families quibble and declare their individual rights to the throne. The tensions are rising as many of Navarra's elite prepare to do anything for their chance to have the throne for themselves. In any regard, we have many lingering narratives and plots that persist for Navarra and its people in the next Dragon Age game. The Mortar Tassi vs the Dread Wolf the Grand Necropolis was recently attacked by the Dread Wolf and his hordes of demons. The Mortalitasi intended on creating a ritual that would send the Cunari back north to their homes, stopping their impeding invasion on Fadus. This ritual required the enigmatic Red Lyrium Idol, bound spirits, and blood magic. The ritual summoned the Dread Wolf, who appeared in the Fade. He sent demons to attack the Mortalitasi through a rift, which caused the mages to seal the caverns. The Dread Wolf spoke and said that that binding spirits will not be tolerated anymore. One of the Mortalitasi mages who survived this encounter had the feeling that binding spirits and using blood magic undoes the work that Solas had planned for the Fade. Therefore, he made himself known that if anyone dare practice this magic again, they will perish. While it's fairly easy for a Tevinter Magister to stop using blood magic, the Mortalitasi require binding spirits for their mummifications. It's their way of life 
their culture? What will happen to the Martalatasi if they cannot do what is required of them? They have an enemy that threatens their livelihood. Surely the good people of Navarra would attempt to band together and slay this dread wolf. Or will the people be blinded by their fight for the throne? Perhaps the Martalatasi themselves live in fear and adhere to the wolf's request. In any regard, the dread wolf threatens Navarra's treatment of the dead. Surely something must be done to stop him. Navarra's Allegiance like the majority of Thedas' nations, each have quibbled and conquered the other in previous ages. However, in the Dragon Age today, Navarra is a proud and powerful empire that contributes most with its trade. The main threats of Navarra at the moment appears to be the Kune. Just like every other non-Kune nation, Navarra, as a predominantly Chantry nation, doesn't see eye to eye with the Kune. Therefore, the Kune will invade once they have a ripe opportunity. However, it seems the main conflict of Navarra is from within. Navarran Cults Many cults linger in Navarra. As I stated before, nobles are secretly involved in necromantic cults. Perhaps we'll see more of these shadowy societies deep within Navarra's elite. The Empty Ones were an ancient, short-lived Navarran cult that worshipped the Blight and by extension the Darkspawn. Who knows, perhaps we could have ancestors with bloodlines of this old cult throughout Navarran society. The Monarchy Plot as mentioned greatly, Navarra City faces an impeding political war, a game for the throne. The question is, who will take this seat and rule the Kingdom of Navarra? Will history repeat itself and perhaps another Pentagast will remain on the throne? Will the Van Markhams concoct a scheme to outplay their rivals? Or will we see a new family rise up, declaring a new reign for both families? Could we perhaps bear witness to a Navarran Queen for a change? Will with that said, many plots linger for the central nation of Thedas. Currently, Navarra faces many troubles, from the Dread Wolf to the next monarch. The kingdom has been known to survive even in dire circumstances. The people have found a way. Hopefully, Navarra shall endure until the next age. But we're just going to have to see for ourselves in the next game. In any regard, let me know all your thoughts on Navarra down below. Make sure you like me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. But until the next one, I should go. Whoa, 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 wh